Despite Japan being one of the top three nations we typically associate with watchmaking along with Switzerland and Germany, the amount of brands that call this nation home is more selective than many think. This scarcity is even more the case when looking at the sub $500 to $1,000 price range that are typically dominated by industry titans of attainability, such as Seiko, Citizen, and Casio. Yet in this game of watch collecting that is often filled with the same familiar reoccurring faces, today we look at an interesting upstart brand that has caught my eye as of late that I wanted to cover, Kuo. A Japanese made watch brand with clean looks and prices starting well under $500. So before we look at these watches specifically, I think it is probably important to discuss the backstory of this brand because it probably is relatively unknown. Founder Kenji Uchimura first had the seed plan to develop a watch brand in 2010 during his travels from Japan to the United Kingdom, where he was studying English and in his spare time would navigate the streets to shop for vintage watches. Of the many pieces he would encounter, he developed a fondness for watch designs from the 1940s to the 1970s primarily dress designs and military field and aviation formats developed during World War II. Following his graduation from university, he began working in the watch industry in Kyoto, Japan, before taking the plunge into developing his own brand, Kuo, in 2020. As the text on the dials indicates, Kuo still calls Kyoto home, having a showroom and small workshop where they assemble all their watches on site. The brand's collection in a short few years has expanded its offering while maintaining a focus on its core design inspirations, with the two pillars being their Old Smith and Royal Smith. Now extending to include several references under each naming umbrella that include quartz pieces starting around that $200 range, traditional field automatic watches in that $400 to $500 range with Miyota 8 series caliber movements on the inside, and their higher end Royal Smiths that are still under $1,000 but include 4 hertz Japanese calibers. For the sake of this video, we're going to focus on two different mechanical watches within that more of that middle tier for the brand within their Old Smith collection line that represents distinct fields for what the brand has to offer. And if you are a fan of attainable Japanese watchmaking, check out the collection down in the description below of some of the top picks from teddyballister.com from Japanese brands under $1,000. We have dozens and dozens of picks in that collection. Yes, many of them are going to be dominated by some of these mainstream brand names, but definitely a great list wide variety of different styles to choose from. Check out the link in the description down below and any purchase helps us in continuing to create content like this in the future. So the two watches we have here are the Small Seconds Old Smith 90007 and the traditional military inspired Old Smith 90002 in bronze. Before we look at their differences, let's discuss the number one shared trait of their design. Now, given the genesis of this brand coming from vintage watches and that it is a Japanese company, a nation that generally has a strong preference for mid 20th century wearing dimensions, both of the Old Smiths here follow a near identical sizing of 35 millimeters in diameter, 12 millimeters in thickness, and a lug to lug of just 42 millimeters. If you were to travel around the streets of Japan and enter the many shops of vintage watch purveyors, it's remarkable how the theme of traditional sizing and style is admired. This can be embodied in watches, but also with other forms of heritage attire, whether we are speaking to the nation's revered reputation of producing salvaged denim, the old fashioned way on shuttle looms, or their appreciation for other heritage clothing, such as classic boots, heritage flight jackets, and other popularized developments that the Japanese have mastered and elevated world-class know-how for. To wear these small watches, you are probably going to fall into two potential camps. First, you have a small wrist where these will feel right at home, or two, you will be one with a similar philosophy as the brand and nation more broadly, believing timeless design should be cherished in the form in which it was originally presented. And further, that solid design can be appreciated at different points of scale. These obviously won't lump in everyone for inclusion, as let's face it, they are small watches. Though it probably comes with less of a surprise when you look at their designs and hear the brand backstory. Looking through the crystals, which can be either mineral or sapphire for most of their watches, depending on whether you want to pay the upcharge for the sapphire, you will get a similar theme of symmetry. The small seconds 007 is encircled with a railway minute track at the periphery, italicized Arabics a step inward, with brand text opposing the small seconds track below. One of my favorite features of this watch is going to be the blue hands, with the minute hand exhibiting a detailed bent tip to more properly point directly to the surrounding minute track. Shifting to the 90002, the outskirts of the dial follow a similar flow, with a railway minute track, though this time has more bolded Arabics that are 
also rays from the dial. The stark white numerals and brand logo contrasted with the warm hues of the faux hour squares embedded within the track and the brownish blasted backdrop combined nicely. To match the outer case, the sword hands are going to be golden brown with faux loom on the inside. Now this could be a point of contention generally just for their looks alone when we're talking about this faux loom, yet might further be a case in this instance since the loom's performance does suffer as a result of its artificial aging. Stepping back outward to the cases once again, the silhouettes of their broader structure are conventional in styling. With your small seconds, 007 opting for a polished case, a four o'clock crown enabling 50 meters of water resistance, and a lug width of 18 millimeters with a black contrast stitch leather strap within. Given it's of an alternative genre, the 002 comes in a completely bronze case apart from the case back in stainless steel, an 18 millimeter lug width housing a nylon pull through strap with leather hardware and a screw down crown at three enabling 100 meters of water resistance. Transitioning to the engines allowing these mechanical watches to operate, we have Japanese calibers from two powerhouses of movement production, Miyota and Seiko. Miyota and Seiko are among the largest producers of watch movements in the entire world with their production capabilities spanning the ranks of entry level to more technologically advanced creations falling underneath larger brand structures. For Kuo, given that the prices here are in that $500 price range, they employ the reliable and mass market 8 series caliber 82S5 in the Old Smith 007 and will contain the no date Seiko NH38 for the Old Smith 002. Both of these calibers share many of the same traits, 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz beat frequencies, just north of 40 hours of power reserve, similar accuracy ranges quoted from the factory, enabling hand winding and hacking, stopping the seconds when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and have seen use in tens of millions of watches over the years. Although Kuo doesn't quote any stated accuracy standard beyond the manufacturer specifications, these watches do appear to be regulated, with the bronze Old Smith running at minus two to plus five seconds a day, and the small seconds Old Smith running at minus three to plus four seconds a day when testing across five different positions. As mentioned in the intro, Japan is a nation that is no stranger to watchmaking, especially more attainable watchmaking, as I would argue the greatest brands under $500 in average retail price hail from Japan, with names like Sinison, Cat, Casio, Orient, and Seiko. Despite this being the case, the ratio of actual brands from the nation in relation to the amount of time they dominate the collector discourse is slightly off. Let me be clear though, I am not saying that brands that typically get the shine from Japan are not worthy of their acclaimed reputation in the slightest. Rather, it is strange that there are not more smaller brands from Japan that are producing cool watches at affordable prices. With a brand like Kuo, its probably biggest challenge is the larger brands, whose scale of production will be able to produce more designs, will have established reputations, and tough to beat prices in the process. With this being the case, a brand like Kuo needs to be focused and will have to accept it can't be everything for everybody. But with this uniform design identity that is certainly informed from other places while peppering in themes from the nation it calls home with prices that are more approachable than most, they are a boutique brand that has caught my eye and one that can resonate with collectors that intersect with its blend of timelessness and traditional styling. But all right guys, that's my take looking at this new brand, Kuo. I'd like to hear your take as well. I am always looking out for just kind of new upstart brands that just pop up out of nowhere. And this was one that I saw people talking about a little bit more. And I thought it was pretty cool. The designs are nice, case sizes are interesting. They're very small for many of their watches, but uh, prices are interesting. And as I mentioned, there's just not that many more affordable Japanese made upstart brands out there, at least that you might think. You think about Seiko, you think about Casio, you think about Citizen, Orient, all these big players, but what about the smaller players in this game of Japan? You hear about it more at the higher end rather than in the sub $1,000 category. So I wanted to give this brand some shine. What do you think about these watches? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Leave some comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. It's a great indication. You want us to cover more watches from brands like this in the future. Sometimes it's difficult for me to look at brands like this because not as many people just know about them. And my job here at times is just to give people like you what you ultimately want to see. So if you want to see stuff like this, let me know in the comments. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also check out teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also, if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. We know you can buy a watch in a lot of different places nowadays, but it allows us to keep doing what we're doing and we love what we do. 
But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.